Today we're going to go over how to properly secure a load of shotgun coils. Here I've got two shotgun coils. They're already loaded on my trailer. Set on the coil racks. Coils are suspended off the deck. And I've got my 4x4s bevel in with two coil racks under each coil. Coil racks are rated for 10,000 pounds apiece, so that each coil can weigh no more than 20,000 pounds. I also had to make sure that my coil boards on the front were sticking out a little beyond the front edge of the coil, and that's important because I'll need them up there for the placement of my trip chain later on. Now if you've got a very large coil, you may have to double up your boards to have enough sticking out the front to set your trip chain. So now that my coils are loaded, it's time to go ahead and begin securing them down. All right, so the first thing I want to do is get my T-chains in place. So I'm going to take one chain, throw it through my coil, bring it down like this. Second chain, through my coil, down here on this side, I never want to cross my chains through the middle. What will happen is if you do an X chain in the center, in the middle where they're crossing, they will bounce and vibrate on each other, and that can cause a weakness of the two links that are constantly beating on each other while they're vibrating going down on the road. Always C chain, never X chain. So with my secondary coil, same thing. Right front to right rear and Left front to left rear. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start attaching my chains. So what I want to do is I want to find my securement point to use where I come straight out from the coil. I don't want to bend back in on the coil because that could damage the face of the coil. And I don't going to come way, I'm not going to come way out away from the coil because doing that, if something catastrophic were to happen, the coil could actually slide down the chain. You want to start straight out, so that way it almost it acts as a locking point to lock this coil in place. So coming off the face of my coil, I see this spool right here is straight off the face. So I will attach my chain there. Grab my corner protectors. Put that in place. Put this one in place. Come over here and coming straight off the face of the coil. If I come to this stake pocket, I'm actually gonna be bending in just a little bit and I don't want that. So I'm gonna step to the first spot out, which would be this spool right here. Come around the spool, hook the chain to itself. While I'm up here, I'll go ahead and place my binder. Then I'll come to this side. Set my corners in place. Always helps to attach the chain before you pull on it. Put 
I used this spool on that side, so I'm going to utilize the same one on this side. That way I keep all my pull even. Set my binder in place. And I will snap those once I get down on the ground, less likely to fall and hurt myself. So, and come up here. Get my corner protectors now. Coming off this side, I can see that I've got a chain pull available in the perfect location. So I'll pull this up, hook the chain right there on it, place my corner protector. Tighten up my chain, look, and my first securement point, if I come back to this spool here, I'll be bending back on the coil, so I got to come up one to this point, attach that, grab my binder, Put it in place, and then mirror image on this side. My corner in place. Pull my chain through. Corner protector on this side, and then hang around. Right back to this spool, straight across from that side. Set my binder in place. Now, for me, I find that it's better to go ahead and get these snapped, then come back up and set my trip chain. So now I'm going to go through. Snap my chains. Now I want to take my excess, my excess chain and I want to wrap it around the binder, specifically around the handle area so that it can't pop open while I'm in transit. Now there's no way that can open up while I'm going down the road. So now I'm going to get my trip chain set up.
Decker truck line requires you to use a trip chain on the front coil of all shotgun coil loads. It is not an option. It is company required. It must be done. So I'm going to come back from the face of my coil. I want to be at such an angle to where I am pulling to the rear of the, with the, on the coil, but I don't want to be at a great enough angle to where I risk getting my chain into the face of the coil and damaging it. This is also where it was important that my dunnage board stuck out beyond the face of my coil so that they will hold my chain up off the deck and actually be blocking the coil. So in this situation, if I lay that out, notice I set a wood block here to hold it off the face. I can just pull it and I can see that at this point right here, I am going to miss the face of my coil. So I'll come down behind the pocket on the outside, up through the middle and hook it to the opposite side. Take my slack to this side. Now I can get down. I always want to keep everything symmetrical. So since I use this point on that side, I'm going to use the exact same point on this side. Down on the back side. Up through the middle. Hook to the opposite side. Place my binder. Snap it securely. Wrap my chain. This chain here prevents this coil from ever coming forward in the event of a catastrophic braking event. Now I'm ready to put my two straps over the top. You are required with all shotgun coils to put at least two straps over them. If you've got room for more and more is necessary, by all means. So now I'm gonna throw my straps over. Now I'll come through on this side. Go through feeding my straps and lining up my winches. And then I'm ready to go ahead and strap it down.
And there you have two properly secured two-decker standard shotgun coils.